We spend a lot of time on this channel talking about new framework releases, from React to Svelte to Solid to all the other cool things that we're into. It doesn't mean those are the only important things. In fact, they're not the most important thing either. The most important thing on the web is probably the one that most of the web runs on still, is based on, and a lot of the APIs and things we're just used to using every day initially came from. That thing is, of course, jQuery, which hasn't had a major release since 2016. While jQuery might feel much older than React, is it Really? This is one of my favorite posts that I saw today. Want to feel old? React was released in May 29th, 2013, or 2,468 days ago. jQuery was released on August 26, 2006, or 2,468 days before React was released. Ready for something even more fun? This tweet was almost exactly four years ago. Yes, it has been more time between now and React's release than between React and jQuery's release. So as old as jQuery is, it's not that much older than React. And over time, those things go the same amount far back in the past. And if we care this much about React, I think it's fair to care and think about jQuery and the hard work the maintainers are doing. So why are we talking about jQuery now? Well, believe it or not, jQuery 4 is finally in beta after eight years of hard work from the maintainers of jQuery. I know this might not be the most exciting release to many, but hear me out. This is one of the most important releases for the modern web because maintaining something used by 78% of the top 1 million websites is terrifying. So let's take a look at what they did, how they did it, and most importantly, how it will affect the web going forward. The jQuery 4.0.0 beta. This blog post is written by Timmy Willison. Him and Mikhail are the two maintainers that have been leading the charge for this, and we'll talk a lot about them and their contributions going forward. jQuery 4 has been in the works for a long time, but it's now ready for a beta release. There's a lot to cover, and the team's excited to see it released. We've got bug fixes, performance improvements, and some breaking changes. We've removed support for Internet Explorer less than 11 after all. Still, we can expect disruption to be minimal. This is important. They have accepted and pushed for the change to not support old versions of Internet Explorer 11, but they're not killing IE entirely, which which is an important detail. Regardless, they're being very careful with how this breaks things, and I appreciate the care and thought they're putting into every detail with this release. Many of these breaking changes are ones the team has wanted to make for years, but couldn't in a patch or minor release. We've trimmed legacy code, removed some previously deprecated APIs, removed some internal-only parameters to public functions that were never documented, and dropped support for some magic behaviors that were overly complicated. We will publish a comprehensive upgrade guide before the final release to outline the removed code and how to migrate. The jQuery migrate plugin will also be ready to assist. For now, please try out the beta and let us know if you encounter any issues. As usual, the release is available on our CDN and the NPM package manager. Third party CDNs will not be hosting the beta release, but will host the 4.0.0 final later. Here are some highlights from the jQuery 4 beta. It's interesting when you're so used to like the modern React and other framework world, seeing the CDN being the first distribution method mentioned, because this is from the days where people would just embed a script tag for the framework they wanted to use. I think it's awesome they're continuing to support that because a lot of applications are going to need the help and not being left in the dust just because new cool frameworks exist is important. This is thankless work and I appreciate them a ton for doing it. Goodbye, Internet Explorer less than 11. jQuery 4 dropped support for IE 10 and older. Some may be asking why we didn't remove support for IE 11. We plan to remove support in stages, and the next step will happen in jQuery 5. For now, we've removed support for IE versions older than 11, and we've reduced the bundle size by 867 gzip bytes in just one PR. Not bad. I know that 867 bytes doesn't sound like much. When you multiply that by 78% of the web, suddenly it is a lot. I'm surprised that they're targeting IE as hard as they are, though. My mom's an x-ray rad tech, and I know in the medical world, there's still a ton of people relying on crazy old Internet Explorer hacks for their internal software and solutions. It's not great in the sense that like those can be hacked easily. Thankfully, most of those services and solutions are entirely offline and sandboxed to like the hospital's network, so it's not too big of a deal. But they're also never going to hire engineers to go rewrite it and react. So supporting that is important. It's cool to see that jQuery isn't dropping it with the full release. I am curious when they plan to drop version 5. Do they detail that here? IE 11 is 10 years old. That is crazy. That's painful to think about. Ugh. I don't want to think about IE anymore. Let's keep going. They did drop other browser supports, including Edge Legacy, which if you're not familiar, was the version of Microsoft Edge before they moved to Chrome. So now Edge is Chromium based. Previously, it was IE based. That's dead entirely. Old versions of iOS, Firefox less than 65, and the Android browser. Most Android phones just use Chrome now. Killing, that's a good thing. And again, if you need to support these old browsers, you can simply stick with the old version of jQuery. They're not adding a bunch of new APIs and things, so you're not going to be missing out too much if you can't upgrade, but it is nice for both you and your users if you're able. So let's take a look at the deprecated APIs that they removed. These functions have been deprecated for several versions. It's time to remove them now that we've released a major. These functions were either always meant to be internal, or they now have native equivalents in all supported browsers. Yes, that includes Internet Explorer 11. So now all of these things can be done with browser standards instead of relying on jQuery for it. So they removed them. Good call. 
everything from is function and is window, which is funny to think you needed jQuery's help for that before, even is array. How hilarious is it that there was no good way to check if something was an array in JavaScript and jQuery just solved it for us. Very thankful these things have been dropped. They even drop push, sort, and splice because why would you need those anymore? Also, the font sizing here is because I command plus for my videos. It's also why this is on the side, so don't read too far into that, just me trying to make this readable. The jQuery prototype has long had array methods that did not behave like any other jQuery method and were always meant only for internal use. These are push, sort, and splice. We switched our use of these methods to array functions instead of the jQuery prototypes. For example, $elements.push became array.push.call. We're mentioning it here in case there are any other plugins out there that may have relied on these methods. This XKCD comment comes to mind when talking about how things can break because users use things in weird ways. Changes in version 10.17. The CPU no longer overheats when you hold down the spacebar. Comments. This update broke my workflow. My control key is hard to reach, so I hold spacebar instead and I configured Emacs to interpret a rapid temperature rise as control. That's horrifying. Look, my setup works for me. Just add an option to re-enable the spacebar heating. Every change breaks someone's workflow. Certainly does. While this is a joke, it touches on a very real thing, especially when you have something as big as jQuery being used by so much of the web with a massive ecosystem of plugins around it, the likelihood somebody's relying on some weird detail or implementation piece is very, very high. And calling out every change that might potentially break something is a level of focus and detail that I wouldn't expect from most developers ever. And again, this is why the work that this team is doing is so thankless and also so important. Now we're more into the things that they were replacing the browser didn't have, like focus in and focus out. For a long time, browsers did not agree on the order of focus and blur events, which includes focus in, focus out, focus and blur. Ugh. The amount of pain I have felt dealing with these things, especially when Twitch supported IE still. Ugh. Finally, the latest version of all browsers that jQuery 4 supports have converged on a common event order. Unfortunately, it differs from the consistent order that jQuery had chosen years ago, which makes this a breaking change. At least everyone is on the same page now. jQuery's order for all four events in the previous versions was focus out, then blur, then focus in, then focus. Starting with jQuery 4, we no longer override native behavior. This means that all browsers except IE will follow the current W3C spec, which is blur, focus out, focus, focus in. And also the W3C standard previously had a different order. This, this, this is the stuff that jQuery devs know that no one else does. Like how many people in the world were aware of the fact that the W3C standard for the order of these events changed? I wasn't until I read this, and I have dealt with these problems in depth in the past. Again, they are doing incredibly important, thankless work, inventing the browser standards, working with W3C, studying how people use these things, studying necessary changes, and making something that works for the majority of the web. This is such an interesting read. Apparently browsers were already implementing things in this order, even though W3C proposed this, so they changed the spec last year to copy what browsers were doing. And the only browser to follow the old spec was IE. That's... <laughs> Thank you for writing this. Form data support. jQuery.ajax has added support for binary data, including form data. It's actually a really nice, like, modern addition. Previously, binary data was not a known data type and was converted to a string. That behavior could be disabled by disabling data conversion and handling the data manually. We decided to make this work automatically. This is technically a breaking change, but should be closer to the expected behavior. I love how careful they're being about breaking changes, but also showing why and detailing how it can benefit people. This is, this is a really well-written post. Automatic JSONP promotion removed. Previously, jQuery.ajax with data type JSON with a provided callback would automatically convert to a JSONP request. Today, the preferred way to interact with a cross-domain backend is with course, which works in all browsers that jQuery 4 supports. This should help avoid unexpected behaviors in case a developer is unaware that code could be executed from a remote domain with JSONP. Again, I didn't know that was a thing. Thankful that they called it out. Jesus jQuery source migrated to ES modules. It's another one of those really cool ones where they modernized the code base for jQuery. They made it way easier to work in and contribute to. They also overhauled the minifier, which is a fun detail we'll go into in a bit. But moving from AMD to ES modules for a project that is, again, used by the majority of the web is terrifying, but also really exciting. This is a huge step forward for ES modules becoming the standard. And if even jQuery supports it, why don't you? jQuery source has always been published with jQuery releases on NPM and GitHub, but could not be imported directly as modules without require JS, which was jQuery's build tool of choice. We have since switched to rollup for packaging jQuery, and we also run tests on the ES modules before packaging them. That's a good modern setup. It's really cool to see. Trusted types in CSP. jQuery 4 adds support for trusted types, ensuring that HTML wrapped in trusted HTML can be used as input to jQuery manipulation methods in a way that does not violate the require trusted types content security policy directive. This is some nerdy stuff about asynchronous script calls and cross-domain requests for things like importing the jQuery bundle because you're importing it from a CDN. Weird niche browser 
stuff that you probably don't have to worry about, but it's nice that they're detailing it here. They call it here that when upgrading from jQuery 3, you shouldn't run into compatibility issues. I like that they call this out because when you see a major release, most people immediately assume it's going to break everything and stay away from it. This is a huge problem with Next, when Next version 13 had App Router as an option and everyone assumed Next 13 meant App Router and they couldn't use it because they were on Pages Router. So a lot of projects stuck on Next 12 because they never understood that Next 13 didn't mean redoing the entire router. It's awesome they're calling this out directly because again, it is really important, but there are breaking changes. So calling it 4.0 is is important because they could deprecate a bunch of stuff, they could change a bunch of stuff, but they shouldn't break the vast majority of users anything. They also have their jQuery migrate plugin, which is also a huge thing to support when you consider how much jQuery code exists and how many people have built things around jQuery. Having to make all of those changes all over the web would suck. And having a plugin that can automatically do a bunch of it for you is a really nice addition that most frameworks wouldn't consider. One more cool thing that they call it here, it's a slim build. Yes, there's a slim build of jQuery that's even smaller than the standard full all things included build. And this one uses the built-in promises standard. So you can use native promises instead of their crazy callback stuff they had before. Yes, jQuery is older than native promises in the browser. There's a call out here for all of the contributors that have made this release possible. I wanna specifically call out Timmy for running the release, writing this blog post. I also want to call it Michel because he worked his butt off on this release. Over half the commits that I could find were from him. And he's been scooping me on this release for weeks now. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to cover this. And this release probably wouldn't have even happened. Just one fun example of the chaos he has worked on. In May of last year, he switched the minifier from Uglify to Terser. And then just a month and a half later, switched from Terser to SWC. Which means, technically speaking, jQuery is now built with Rust. I think that's awesome. As crazy as it is switching your minifier twice in such a short window, seems like they really wanted to modernize the project and SWC combined with its rollup plugins provided a better and faster experience for them to iterate on jQuery itself. It's crazy to think the jQuery build tools and the ecosystem around their actual code base is so modern, but that shows just how much these developers are paying attention. They want to make sure that jQuery is and stays a great experience both for the maintainers and the developers using it. I know jQuery is not going to be the most exciting thing for a lot of my audience, but I really hope you guys understand the value and the hard work these maintainers are doing. I'm not memeing when I make this video. I'm not memeing when I say how important this release is. It's so hard and scary making changes to things used by millions upon millions of websites. And this team has worked their butts off for the last eight years to make sure this release would go smoothly. Huge shout out to everyone involved. You're doing the work no one on the web appreciates. I hope this video helps a few more people appreciate what you've done. Till next time, peace nerds.